I'm Mike Thomas and uh, from 1993, it was April the 1st, significant date, um, my wife and I took over the um, um, Nuki Zoo, which we run until our retirement in 2003. Thank you. And my name's Mark Norris. I joined uh, <coughs> Nuki Zoo around about 1995, 1996 to run the education programme. Mike invited me along to come and set that up or we'll continue that, including the college, which we've talked about in another segment. And now we're going to talk a bit about those early days of changing a uh, uh, challenged, struggling council run zoo into a very successful um, visitor attraction. Mike. Yes, it was interesting because I knew Nuki Zoo quite well. <coughs> um, before Nuki Zoo I had Seal Sanctuary and we used to use Nuki Zoo as a staging post to rescue seals for us. So I knew it quite well <coughs> and I also knew that um, I was not having the best of times. Not having the best of times because people didn't like zoos. They didn't understand it was zoological gardens, that they were looking at some new experience in life. So we wanted to take over the zoo and take away this image, which was called Cornwall Animal World. A bit like Furniture World, Home World, whereas really it's a zoological garden. So the first thing was, as soon as we could, turn it back to Nuki Zoo and then start this process. I was always interested. Education was so important that we had to show people what zoos really meant. And I remember that when I took it over, that I was asked a question at the council offices in St. Austin, are you a curator. Uh, no, I'm not. Um, you've got a zoological degree, have you? No, I haven't. No. What have you then? Well, I have been a teacher and I've been an observer of people. If you understand that people are just another species of animals, we're all a big, wide world that contribute to each other. This is what I want to show, but it wasn't so easy. The day we started on April the 1st, Good Friday, and there I was looking forward to the surge of people coming for Easter. It didn't happen. It rained. We did have two people came though, and that was good because I thought holidaymakers have started. Had they just? They were two local people curious to know what was going on. And they stood there in the rain, we said, we'll give you your money back. <laughs> we didn't have any, but we gave it back to them. And they became tremendous friends and season ticket holders eventually, regular visitors of our zoo. And it went on, it rained for two or three weeks, I think. And someone from the council said, we told you it wasn't going to be easy, we couldn't do it. What's going to happen to you then? And I thought, well, I ain't going to go bust if I can help it. Mm. So we had to think how we would approach it. And gradually, we spent more and more money and more and more people gradually came to the zoo. Not easily. I started a little bus service, which I paid for, to go from the zoo up to town and bring people back. The bus used to go up to town empty and come back empty. It was that bad. One of the first things I did was to get a contract gardener. I had um, Hardy Exotics from Penzance and they came and I said to Clyde, no, part of the zoological garden is forest. Part of it is a bit of a desert. Do something. So he said, Right, and after some weeks of his work and people that he employed, he said, there we are, in five years time, he said, this is going to be wonderful. Mm. 
I said, what's it going to be like tomorrow? So I said, I'll tell you what I will do. I understand what you're saying. Give me a banana plant with one banana on it at the entrance so that people can see. I said, as long as they can see from out there, there's a banana on a banana plant. It must be good. And that was our first introduction to getting one or two visitors in. Well, it escalated from then, not easily, because there were several times we almost went broke. Mm. The council weren't right, they weren't, um, they had worked very hard at this. So it wasn't an easy task by any means. Many zoos were having a rough time, but we tried to put a package together. That package enveloped the local community, the local people of Newquay and the local people of Newquay became tremendous friends. Gradually, the numbers of local people increased so much that we had several disasters. You know, I, the best one I can tell you about is foot and mouth. We didn't have animals that could have been infected. Um, but, you know... Um, Nearby were some, some possible hotspots. Yeah, right? birds, uh, mm, they mm, could all walk mm, past mm, the zoo, mm, but mm. We, we closed. And closed in sympathy to the farmers of, mm. who were suffering. Well, it was a hard time, because by now it was costing £1,000 a day, thousands, to run the zoo. Mm. So we thought, how long are we going to be able to stand that pressure? My wife and I were still standing so much of the finance. Mm. The bank manager was lending it to us, and he was getting anxious. So. <clears throat> Fortunately, we shut, and I remember saying to my staff, I had a meeting, I said, look, it's going to be a hard time financially, so I can only say one thing to you, you've been here with me for a number of years, we've always gone on well together, and I said, rather than close the zoo, because the animals and everything else got to be taken care of, if I say, can I pay you half pay for as long as this problem lasts and I'll make it up to you at the end. Well, they were loyal. They said yes, except one person. He said, look, I, I can't do it. He said, I've got four or five children and I've got to look after them. So I said, well, you know, go and find another job and see what happens. It's the best. But when you think so many others just stuck with it mm. and we were six weeks before we were able to open again when Mr Cameron said the world is open, tourists come and they came, they came to the zoo, it was brilliant and uh, I had a free day for everyone yes. yeah. and an evening barbecue for all the local people, not only New Cape but Brown Cornwall and so on and, and many uh, of them have done fantastic sponsorship things, haven't well, they, to, to keep is, us going during the last six weeks. I didn't know about, you see. Mm. There were people that had been uh, doing bike rides, sponsored walks, swims and so on. And there were collection boxes in every garage, in every shop. Some of the hotels through Dave Alexander were organising collections. Mm. And when we had this day of the evening barbecue, I was presented with something like, uh, I can't remember the exact amount, but it was between seven and 10,000 pounds that they had collected. And someone said to me, we didn't want our zoo to close. The important thing there was our zoo. Mm. You see, it wasn't just Jenny and mine. And, and another director. It was our zoo, the people of Newquay mm. and the people of Cornwall. And consequently, we hoped the people that came down on holiday because it was just a lot of fun to come to the zoo, a lot of learning and a lot of help. 
Well, it was part of restoring pride to the whole area because the Trenance Leisure Park or the Trenance Gardens was struggling at the time, wasn't it? And, yeah. and the zoo was part of rebuilding the kind of pride in the area and regenerating that area, which is extremely well, we important. We've that for all mm. people. Mm. There was um, the, the um, little train, yeah. and there was Waterworld, there was the big train that went around the town, and there was K9, which is the little cafe. And when we came, there wasn't a shop, for instance, like there is now. There used to be a little kiosk. Yes. But it was the local people that helped us build that shop. Mm. That, that became quite a big shop. And the thing is that we formed an alliance with all these groups, giving benefits to each and the other. For instance, if when we had Halloween, I used to say to Eric on the train, the little train, we'll decorate the tunnel and can you supply one of your drivers at night because we're going to have a ghostly ride mm -hmm. around the zoo. Yes, of course, we were part of it and whatever it was and the um, big train that went around. Train. Yep. Yeah, the big train. We used to say, okay, we're going to have a dawn chorus when people come to the zoo, see the animals waking up. Can we use your train around the town to show people waking up? No problem. And events were incredibly popular. Yeah, weren't they? Yeah. You, you know, we had uh, Halloween. Mm. I remember one Halloween, the prize before we left, the, the staff always did um, uh, the, the um, strange stations and the games lemons, and, and yeah, the melons yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and the pumpkin there was carving. a prize for the pumpkins cutting out the best pumpkin mm. but one of the, the year before we left the prize was going to be the best likeness to Mike Thomas now you see I didn't know that but when they said right will you come out and judge all I saw was this weird <laughs> I said, well, they said, they are supposed to be you. Well, I, I chose the best looking one, didn't mm. I? Yeah. But what a lovely thing, all the staff are involved. You know, I used to think in the beginning, when we first went there, the staff would get changed into their evening clothes to go out, not in the uniform. When we were leaving, the staff used to take such a delight in going out in the evening wearing mm. their uniform. They were proud of where they were. Because when I first joined you, you know, suits weren't very popular and you wouldn't have walked around in your zoo uniform. No. And gradually people realised what we'd done here and the incredible things we'd done here and you were very proud to wear it. Oh, we, we loved it. We, mm. we used to enter into all the competitions in the town. The carnival. You know, the carnival mm. once a year. I remember my secretary, she dressed her dress was as a tortoise. Mm. And you know how quickly tortoises moved. It took her a couple of hours. We yeah. dragged her through the streets of Nikki <laughs> on a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> she took such good part though, wasn't it? You know, yeah. we had a lot of fun. And I think that's the thing. If you enjoy your work, you need to have a lot of fun within it. When I've talked to you before, you said probably the the one moment you knew, <clears throat> that, apart from foot and mouth, that people were supporting us was we did incredibly well in the Small Business of the Year Award and that was a, a recognition of your efforts to turn the place around. Well, that, that was something else because um, we entered <coughs> the small National Small Business of the Year Award and there were 240 entrants, I think, so we said we'll give it a whirl, and it was a back manager who said, sponsored by HSBC, the TTI, and several other organisations. So we were chosen in the last six out of 240. Wonderful. So we went up to claim uh, our place as one of the six, and my wife and I sat and listened to uh, all about technology and the social media and so on, of which I knew little, mm. 
when the afternoon was the prize giving and they announced in turn and we won second prize second award for the National Small Business Year someone said to me do you know this is the first time the zoo's ever got it and the first time that anyone's ever won the award south of Bristol mm. what an achievement that was and the next year we were chosen in the one the last six again at about 200 so we went up to London and this time we took the bank manager with us mm. That's and he was a fantastic amazed day. because not only that, he'd gone to headquarters, HSBC headquarters, and he saw all these beautiful paintings and Lowry stuff as well. And he says, made my day mm. because we didn't win, but we we're in the last six and highly commended. Mm. And he said, well, I said, I think I'm going to retire soon. <laughs> it was a hard one award. And he said, I'll tell you what, if you're going to retire, so am I. Mm. And as it happened, he did retire a month after me. Which brings us to our final question. I know you've mentioned that college was probably the most important thing to you from turning the zoo around, your sort of the thing you thought that you were most proud of. Are there any other sort of highlight memories, a final highlight memory of, of as you say in your, in your book, not many people get to run to. What, what was one other highlight that would, um, would well, have come? Well, I, I think <coughs> this bit that you just mentioned, not many people uh, own a zoo. Mm. The number of times when people say, what do you do? I own a zoo. Mm. No. They then gather all their friends around. I've had this. Is, when I've been flying off somewhere, you know, oh, come over here a minute, listen to it, <laughs> right? And I remember one time we'd gone to the Gambia, mm -hmm. and uh, I said to my wife, I said, I'll go and get the um, uh, uh, keys from reception. And I stood at reception, and I turned around to the big television on the wall, and I said, that's me. <laughs> and it was me holding plaster cast mm. of the beast of Bobman's foot. <laughs> so we, we'd been photographed and there it was in the gambit. You know, and it, it was lovely to think that we had become worldwide. <laughs> Just a little thing, but it was pleasing. <laughs>